So you'll go ahead and click on the syllabus and you'll have my information as well as Dr. Hannah Woolley. She goes by Hannah just like I go by Amy and her email is there. She's my instructional assistant. She will be entering a lot of the actual scores during the course. Um, although we will be collaborating in the evaluation and feedback of all of your assignments. So if you have questions, please email both of us um, on that. The acquired text, the outcomes, expectations, please note APA guidelines and format is expected and you will be assessed on that. I already discussed the Q&As. This is an important piece. I know Again, this is a, a trying time. Um, so there is a little flexibility in terms of late assignments. I can accept them up to 24 hours. That's one day late. You will be assessed a 20% penalty for that. Um, and after that, then they will not be accepted. Do take the time to read through netiquette. That's basically what does it look like to have civil conversations um, and professional discourse that's respectful of the different cultural, linguistic, and political, and religious, and other backgrounds. And what is it? How, how do we um, communicate and, and um, respect each other in the process? So please take a look at the Netiquette guidelines. You'll notice that in the course rubrics, that folks that are not following Netiquette guidelines or the Student Code of Conduct. Um, those assignments will not be accepted. There are 258 points available. We will have four current conversations in education. We're going to actually start with a federal issue, state, local, and then go to the international. Um, and there's a rubric for each one of those. Part one will be due one week, which is worth 12 points, and part two will be due the following week, which is a total of eight points so 20 points possible for each 80 total and through the Mo Moodle we'll go into more details with the rubric but you can get a sense of what that looks like um, again the initial post will be summarizing a current issue looking at the background the perspectives tensions recommendation for policies and then you'll end with an engaging critical question that um, other folks will have a chance to follow up on. And hopefully it'll be, um, I always find these to be really, really valuable and I learn a lot. So these will be evaluated on relevance, demonstrating understanding, support APA. They are approximately one process um, page or 200 words and not including citations. I will share an example of one for the first week. And again, the first post is due on Sunday. You'll respond to two or more of your colleagues post and those will be evaluated also on relevance, connections, new ideas. So saying, hey, that was cool. Or I really liked that. that. That's not at all going to help you. So <laughs> take a look at the rubric. We're looking to extend and refine ideas and dig deep into that professional conversation. The second major assignment each week is going to be based on the reading. And that is engaging in the professional conversation around critical issues. Each issue is going to be introduced with multiple perspectives. And you will be writing an essay. Uh, again, the initial post of that essay is due every Thursday. And then you'll respond to the post by that same in that week by that Sunday. That's something we'll look at in more depth as we get to that. It gives you an overview. And then we'll end the course um, with a post assessment, just like you did the pre assessment at the beginning, and a reflective essay with professional goals. And that, my friends, is the course. In terms of the content and the readings on the syllabus, it will give you an overview of what you can expect. So, for example, week one, which is already made available, is an introduction. We'll be looking at chapter one, which again, I provided for you for week one, in case you haven't had a chance to grab your text, and three additional sources that I'm going to ask you to look at 
Um, you can spend a lot of times, they have links in them. Some of you have a background in ed policy. You have a little bit of our history of, of what, what's, you know, some of the critical issues. These, the first two critical issues in public schools really kind of help catch you up on what people are talking about. Ed policy is a good review for those of you that have not had um, any exposure to or you know the system of ed policy in in our country so that's to start us off with it all chapter one is the one that you're going to want to focus on the most it sets the course up and helps you know really what you can expect and the perspectives that uh, we'll be looking at and then from there you'll see we will be looking at those key questions whose interest should schools serve so two particular topics chapter um, part one is a brief overview, which is going to be really helpful in setting the stage as we look at the following issues, issues of family choice in education, the issues around equity and privilege of school financing, privatization the next uh, following week, and religion in, in public schools, so free expression versus separation. So that's kind of an overview, and you can see as we go through the different other issues that we will be looking at, all are very relevant and current. Anytime you see an asterisk, those are additional resources that I am providing for you. So, my friends, that's what that looks like, and you've seen the SOU CARE statements, Title IX, Disabilities and Academic Support. Um, so if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. Just a quick few more things. There's some additional research and writing sites here for you. If you're not familiar with APA, this is a great Purdue Al. Um, there's a lot of other things that you can use online. There's also some good resources at our library. So these are all uh, links that would be helpful as you're looking to find educational resources and just for your own um, professional library. Also, if you're not familiar with how to use Moodle, which I'm assuming since this is your last class, all of you are pretty well versed. Again, course utilities and tools are up there on how to access the um, different tools in Moodle. In week one, I just want to go over it. You'll see the same structure will exist throughout. If you click on here, you'll find, first of all, an overview of really what's due. So week one, April 6th to the 12th, um, read uh, week one lecture. So this is actually what you're all engaged in right now, plus an overview of just the big ideas um, that will help kind of walk you through the class. Chapter one and this week's additional readings. Again, you want to spend more time focusing on these two. I'm sorry, whoops, uh, public school and critical literacy. Ed policies in the U.S. is more of an overview to help you. Complete by Thursday. This is your pre-assessment. Introduce yourself to us. I know a lot of you know each other, but um, we're looking forward to uh, getting a sense of who you are now and where you're going. And then the initial um, professional conversation is due on Thursday. Your responses to that is due on Sunday. The lecture, I'm just clicking on that really quick for you. This is, um, as again, just kind of examples of what Ed Reform looks like throughout the um, different areas from we can maybe focus it on curriculum or it may be focusing on school structures or, or on teachers so asking you to get a sense of that looking at when we think about these issues what problems are these issues trying to solve so as you start looking at the reading and you start preparing to do the writing um, think to yourself what, what's the problem we're trying to solve here and who's it serving and from what perspective so that's just something for you to take again the pre-assessment the introduction, you know, click on and then add. And then I do want to spend just a minute before we depart today on what is the professional conversation. So a one to two page essay that develops a position and supports that position using specific evidence. So this is where APA and professional writing comes in. Each week you will be doing one of these professional conversations and you'll have a chance to choose a topic. So I'm going to ask that you really do the reading, um, but then focus in on after you've completed the reading, choose one of the questions that really resonated with you. So we're looking for 
one, position and focus. So it's developing a clear argument, um, considering develop your focus with, you know, using the articles to support, um, use outside sources, how you structure, we're looking for organization, evidence that you supporting your claims with evidence, um, both from the article, but also from your own experience. And then graduate level writing, again, paying attention to the sensitivity of others and following the code of conduct with APA format. So for the first week, there are three questions for you to consider. What insights did you gain regarding the purpose of N and its influence on your area of focus? Or what issues or trends are impacting the larger context of education? And then consider the focus and big questions in this week's lecture. And again, those are the questions that we started talking about, and I encourage you to go back to the lecture to review them, but it's looking at, you know, who's, um, what knowledge is most worth knowing? Who, who's, uh, who, who are schools serving, right? And how, what, how are these issues impacting our practice? So those are just examples, and if you go back to the lecture, you can focus in on one or all of them. You'll respond to two of your peers' posts, and the professional conversation rubric will be helpful um, for you in discerning exactly how these assignments will be scored. So do take the time to familiarize yourself with it, both your initial as well as your responses. All right, my friends, that is a wrap. And I, again, I wish you the very best this week. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to contact either myself or Hannah. Post questions that are for everyone um, on the Q&A. This is a great time to help each other out because chances are if you have a question, someone else either has the same question or at least has an answer. But we will respond to your Q&As and get back to you within 24 hours, if at all possible. Um, and I will give you an update next week on week two. So we'll take it one week at a time. I wish you the very best. Be kind to yourself and each other and um, stay healthy. All right, my friends.